McQuistian. For over 25 years, talking about things that matter with people who care. Production of McQuistian is made possible in part by individual viewers, supporters of the Foundation for Responsible Television, CF accountants and consultants adding value to clients throughout the region, the University of Texas at Dallas, creating the future. Now this is a second in a two-part series that features a lengthy interview with Glenn Greenwald. I interviewed this controversial journalist here in Dallas after he spoke for the National Center for Policy Analysis. The subject is his book on Edward Snowden and the need for a balance between journalism and national security. But before we look at more of the interview, let's meet our experts here in the studio. So starting on my left is Daxton R. Chip Stewart. He's an attorney and a journalist, an associate professor and associate dean of the Bob Schieffer College of Communication at TCU in Fort Worth. Chip, welcome to the program. Thank you, Dennis. Sitting next to you is Todd Robertson. He's an editorial writer for the Dallas Morning News, focusing on Southern Dallas, drug trafficking, immigration, and international affairs. He's a former a foreign correspondent uh, covering Europe, Latin America, and the Middle East. Todd, welcome back to the program. Thank you. And on the other side of you is Charles Chip Babcock. He's an award-winning First Amendment lawyer and trial and appellate attorney with Jackson Walker, and his clients have included uh, Oprah and Dr. Phil, among others. And Roger Clemens, did you say before? Uh, I mentioned Roger Clemens and, a week ago. Exactly. Roger Clemens last week. You mentioned that. So, uh, gentlemen, I'm going to ask you to look at this 13-minute uh, clip of the interview I did with Glenn Greenwald. We played the first part of it in the prior program. We'll play this part. And while it deals with national security, it deals more with journalism, the Fourth Amendment, First Amendment, and things like that. So we'll do that. So when we're ready, let's run that clip of my interview with Glenn Greenwald, where we start by talking about Steve Croft. Uh, I had the opportunity to interview Steve Croft of 60 Minutes here a couple of years ago, and we were talking about whether or not Julian Assange is also a journalist. I mean, do, how, how would you characterize Julian Assange and Daniel Ellsberg and Edward Snowden? And I think Julian Assange is a little bit different than both Ellsberg and Snowden because Ellsberg and Snowden were both working inside the government and had this oath that you referred to earlier um, and were given access to the material and as government officials or in the case of each of them actually they were working for private contractors working mm -hmm. with the government they went to journalists and 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 asked them at the material be published in the case of Ellsberg to the Times, in the case of Snowden to me and the Guardian. And, and um, Julian has never been a, an employee of the U.S. government. He's not even an American citizen. In fact, I don't think he's ever set foot on American soil in his life. Um, so what he is really more akin to a newspaper, um, people inside the government, and in the most famous case, um, Chelsea Manning, formerly Bradley Manning, came to him and said, I have all this material showing American war crimes. and." And I think you should publish them, and and he did. And 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 Julian actually worked with um, the Guardian and the New York Times and and major newspapers around the world to curate the material and and to publish it. So I do see WikiLeaks as as a journalist. What is the role of journalism? What should the role of journalism be today? So for me, the defining event of how I think about journalism was the Iraq War and the lead up to the Iraq War. And obviously the Iraq War was controversial and continues to be controversial, but what isn't controversial, I don't think, is that there was a pretty significant failure on the part of the American media. And the reason there was a failure was because instead of investigating and scrutinizing um, and subjecting to criminal, to, to, to critical investigation, the claims that the U.S. government was making about the nature of that threat, about Saddam Hussein's nuclear weapons capability and, and the relationship that the Iraqi government had with al-Qaeda, instead of subjecting it to critical scrutiny, it said just amplified it. The New York Times every single day put on its front page articles by Judy Miller and others that simply quoted anonymous government officials making these claims without any evidence and, and sort of laundering them as truth. And, and what this illustrated is this very close relationship that has formed between government officials on the one hand and major